Hello, I am Shimon Stenhu of EVE University, and this is episode 28 of How to Survive EVE Online. We are going to take on the next step of the military chain, so right-click Seville Aeron, start conversation, and he wants us to destroy Wolf's outpost. Let me actually get back into my fighting ship, and he's going to give us another implant, uh, and this is going to be multiple acceleration gates. Uh, let's click accept. The game will throw text at you about acceleration gates again. Let me make sure everything is in order on board my ship. I have extra ammo. I do. I have my weapons fully loaded. I've got my afterburner, armor repair, overdrive injector. Everything's good. Um, and you know what? I want to improve my uh, capacitor a little bit. So, Hopefully you trained up energy grid upgrades, because we're going to go find a cap recharger I. Again, Roman numerals. And this has a prerequisite of energy grid upgrades level 2. This is why I had you train energy grid upgrades earlier in the series. So left click cap recharger I, and let's buy one unit of the cheapest that we can find in station. And let's go ahead and slap that on. Let's close the fitting window, close this, close, close that, and undock. Let's get this thing out of the way. Uh, let me close this thing. Uh, right click, empty space, cache full for capsuleers, encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive active. Here is the acceleration gate. Right click the acceleration gate, activate gate. Warp drive active. Or you could have simply left click the acceleration gate and then left click activate gate. Either method works. Alright, here's the next acceleration gate. Left click the gate. Looks like the next acceleration gate is guarded. You'll take, take care of the guards before we get through. Try to activate the gate anyway. Uh, cannot activate. There are synchronized gates, scramblers, and all hostile entities. Right! This is guarded. Lock up everything. I think I have targeting level 2 at this point, and an Atron can handle four targets. Hit F1 to fire. Hit F1 to fire again. Keep an eye on the range and the angular velocity. With my railguns, I need the enemies to be within 7 kilometers and an angular velocity of 0.13 milliradians per second or less. I'm going to approach since for some reason I seem to be having trouble. Let me show info on this again. Yeah, my tracking speed is 0.136 milliradians per second. Alright, I'm going to try kiting away. So I'm double click in a direction away from the enemies. I'm hitting my afterburner. Now I'm going to cut the afterburner, open fire. Because I don't want to get too far out of range. Alright, I am too far out of range. Control s By the way, control space bar will bring you to a full stop. And if you mouse over a particular target portrait for long enough, the camera will turn to face it. Alright. Uh, I don't like these angular velocities, they're too high. I'm going to double click off that way, turn on the afterburner, turn off the afterburner, and when the angular velocities drop again, open fire. And control spacebar to stop, because I don't want to get too far away. And I am now too far away. Let me switch to a closer target.
For those of you who aren't quite getting the concept of angular velocity, angular velocity is a measure of how quickly somebody is moving around your ship. If they're going 500 meters per second in a circle around you, but that circle is 20 kilometers in radius, that's an angular velocity of 0.025 radians per second. But if they're going 500 meters per second around you and that circle is only 500 meters in radius, that's a full radian per second. So the same linear velocity counts for a lot more in your angular velocity if the enemy is orbiting closer to you than if they are orbiting farther away. By the way, that's how small sh that's one way that small ships avoid taking damage from battleship from battleship sized guns. They're orbiting so close that the tracking speed on battleship guns can't keep up with them. I'm gonna double click away from those enemies. And as long as I'm mentioning that example, I should probably also point out uh, guns, that is turrets, have something called a signature resolution. I'm using frigate-sized guns, so this is a signature resolution of 40 meters. If I'm shooting a target that has a 40 meter signature radius, uh, then I'd have to keep the angular velocity under 0.136 radians per second. If I were trying to shoot at an identical Atron, piloted by another copy of myself, my own signature radius is 36 meters. So I'm a little bit smaller than the resolution, so I'd really have to keep the angular velocity below the tracking speed. Battleship guns typically have a tracking speed around 10 or 20 milliradians per second, or 0 0.020 radians per second. Additionally, they've got a signature resolution of 400 meters, so frigates are really hard to hit with battleship guns. I've done enough talking, let's approach the acceleration gate. Right-click one of the wrecks, bookmark the wreck before you leave. Activate gate. Warp drive active. Now, the text says, I would recommend leaving the loot in the wreck after you obliterate the structure. You would not want to be caught trying to jump between systems with contraband in your cargo hold. The local security forces do not look kindly upon such activity. That warning is all well and good, except that it's misplaced. That warning is supposed to be in the next mission, apparently. Let's right-click our orbit button. Let's change our default orbit distance to 4,000 meters, because I don't like how close those asteroids are. I could bump into them, and if I bump into them, I might slow down a lot, which makes me easier to hit. So let's orbit Wolf's Outpost. Let's open fire. Oh, hold on, I need to target lock it. Open fire. And then all of a sudden, hostiles show up. Let's lock up the two Corelli Initiates and one of the sentry guns. And shoot one of the Corelli Initiates instead. Here. Look at those angular velocities. That's way higher than my tracking speed. Up. Oh. His angular dropped momentarily. That made him an easy target. And let's see if I can get just as lucky with this one. This one's trying to tail me, but he's not doing a good job of keeping his angular velocity up. All right. Let's lock the other wolf's defense sentry. And you know what? Let me change the default orbit distance to 2,500 because I want to get these defense sentries within my own optimal. So let's orbit Wolf's outpost a little closer. Let's pick a defense sentry and open fire. Now notice here that I'm not taking a whole lot of damage from these guys. That's because sentry towers and if and sentry drones deployed by players are not well known for their tracking speed. They're big targets, so I can hit them without a problem. Then again, I don't know if truly stationary objects are counted 
in the combat calculations for angular velocity anyway. But anyway, I'm moving around them, and I'm barely taking any damage. If I come to a complete stop by hitting control spacebar, my angular velocity comes down to zero. Oh, look at the shield bar. It just went down a lot. Down, down, very quickly. I'm taking a lot of damage sitting still right here. That's I'm making myself an easy target. Alright. See how fast my shields are going down? Let's left-click roll south post and orbit. The moment I stop, the moment I start orbiting, I stop being an easy target. Now their probability to hit me has dropped. By the way, I'm an armor tank vessel. Uh, my armor repair module doesn't have anything to do as long as the shields are holding. Bump. I just bumped off a rock. Alright. If you're a shield tanked ship, you might not want to let your shields get that low. You would already be running your shield booster. Mostly an issue for new Kaldarian Mimitar players. Oh, by the way, your race of birth does not limit you to what ships you can fly. You can always cross-train into other ships, into other racial ships. Your first step would be to search the market for Kaldari Frigate, Minmitar Frigate, Amar Frigate, or if you're not playing a Galente character, Galente Frigate. And you can always train all of the other races of ships. You can also train the other races' weapon systems. You can always train small laser turret, small projectile turret. As a Galente player, you're given small hybrid turret automatically. Uh, you can always train missiles. The Calvary like using missiles. Alright, let's approach Wolf's outpost and let's finish the job. By the way, you also want to right click a wreck here and bookmark location. Let's approach the cargo container, open your cargo hold. Now that warning that the game gave you about contraband doesn't apply here. These are frozen plant seeds and hollow reels. There's nothing here indicating that it's contraband. If it were contraband, there would be a special skull and crossbones icon. It would be a black and white skull and crossbones icon right next to the number 10 here. I'll show you the difference more clearly later. But if you right click an item and show info, if there is a legality tab, then it's considered contraband by somebody. Let's return to station. There's no legality tab here, so it's not considered contraband. You're perfectly fine. Control R to reload your weapons. Now, those were real asteroids back there. Uh, I think it was Veldspar, Pyrox, Reason, Plagioclase. If you feel like chewing rocks, don't turn in the mission. Grab your Navitas frigate, slap some minor ones onto it, and as well as some expanded cargo holds one, uh, and go back out to the mission and go mining. It's not a celestial asteroid belt, so you are far less likely to be disturbed there by players Talking than in the celestial asteroid, asteroid belts. It's always possible to be, to be disturbed by other players, it's just less likely. I'm not going to bother with that, I'm just going to turn in the mission and salvage. So, right click Civil Aeron, start conversation, complete mission, Oh, by the way, he gives you an ocular implant, uh, which improves your perception, which will improve your skill training times on the stuff you're probably training up right now. And just to review... Pause. Okay. Right-click the implant. Plug in. Implants are lost when unplugged and when you die. Are you sure you use this one now? Push OK. Click Apply to resume your skill training, and you are all set. I'm going to stop the episode here. In the next episode, we'll take on the next step of the military chain. In the meantime, thank you for watching.